Hello and welcome to lesson number 11 in our Praying Through It Bible Study series. Today we're going to look at another example of a prayer from the Bible. And like we've been doing, we're going to break it down and we're going to see how we might be able to apply some elements of this prayer into our own prayer lives. So um, if you want to follow along on a worksheet, don't forget to click that link that is below this video and that will take you to a worksheet that goes along with this lesson. All right, so the prayer that we're going to be looking at today comes from Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11, verses 11 through 15. Numbers 11, 11 through 15. So I'm going to go ahead and read this prayer and then we'll talk about it. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which you swore to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me saying, give us meat that we should eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now. If I have found favor in your sight and do not let me see my wretchedness. So who was speaking this prayer? Well, verse 11 tells us that it was Moses. This was Moses talking to the Lord. And the purpose of this prayer, which is number two on your worksheet, was for Moses to express anger and frustration to the Lord. He was upset about some of the behavior of the Israelites and he was taking that to God in prayer. He was very upset about it. He was frustrated and angry and he went to God in prayer about that. So what was happening among the Israelites that caused Moses to be so displeased? Well, if you go back to the beginning of chapter 11, we find out that the Israelites were camped in the wilderness of Sinai and they're upset right now because they're hungry. They're tired of the manna that God has been sending them to eat and they want meat. They are remembering the things that they ate while they were in Egypt. And so it says in verse five, we remember the fish which we freely ate in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Now remember, Moses has led them out of Egypt, out of bondage. And he is taking them on this journey that is leading them to the promised land. But time and time again, the Israelites complain. And they do not demonstrate trust in God. And they are oftentimes punished for their unfaithfulness. In this situation, Moses is, he's about had enough. He, he is very, very angry with the Israelites. In verse 10, it says, then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. And Moses also was displeased. And so he goes to God in prayer. Question number three on your worksheet asks, do you think this person was right or wrong in offering this prayer? Why? So do you think Moses was right in, in going to God in anger and in frustration? Or do you think he was wrong for doing that? Think about that for just a second and think about why you would answer one way or the other. Quite honestly, we could get into some really great discussion over this. And we could talk about this um, in great detail. And um, it would take a lot longer than what we have time for in just this short little video. But talking about being angry about something and taking that to God. Is it okay to do that? I'm going to give you kind of a right and wrong way to look at that. Is it okay to go and talk to God about what you're angry over and to talk to God about your frustrations? Yes. 
Yes, it is okay. God knows already what is making you angry. If you're feeling that emotion or if you are feeling frustrated, he already knows what you're feeling. He wants you to come and talk to him about it. He wants you to come and involve him in whatever it is that you're struggling through, whatever it is that's causing you grief or causing you pain. What is wrong is to be disrespectful or to be irreverent in coming to God with your anger. It is wrong to come to God and put blame on God for whatever it is that's causing you to be angry. We have to be really careful that we don't come to God in a way that accuses him of being the source of our anger. We have to be careful about that. We can come to God with questions, sincere questions about things that are happening in our lives, but we have to be very careful not to come with, with questions that accuse God. Why are you doing this to me? Why have you done this? Why did you put this in my life? We have to be very careful about that. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27, Be angry, but do not sin. Be angry, but do not sin. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 says, Put off anger. And, and James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20 says, Be slow to wrath or be slow to anger. And the reason is anger can very easily cause us to trip into sin. If we're not keeping it in check and if we don't, um, if we don't watch how we are responding in anger, it can lead us to sin. And we want to be very, very careful about that. So let's look at number four. How did God respond to Moses's prayer? How did he answer him? There are kind of a couple of different responses that God gives to, to Moses's prayer. Number one, he says, I'm going to give you help. Remember in Moses's prayer, he says, I'm not able to bear all these people alone. The burden is too great for me. God heard that. And he sets up a situation for Moses where he can have help. He instructs him to, to bring in 70 men, 70 elders. And he is going to um, pour his spirit out on those men. And, and they will be able to bear the burdens of the people with him. You see that in verse 17. I will take of the spirit that is upon you. This is God talking. And will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you. That you may not bear it yourself alone. So he gives Moses help. That's number one. Number two. He does give the Israelites meat. He gives them quail. And so... You're going to have to go back and read that whole story because um, God is displeased with the way that the Israelites were, um, were acting because of their lack of faith and because of their wanting to go back to Egypt because they thought it was so much better there. And so you need to go back and read that story about what happens with the quail. But anyway, he does provide for them. He does provide them something to eat. So the answer to number three is... He answered, yes, let me help you. I'm going to give you help, and I'm going to send food for the people. Let's see. Read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, and Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. This is worksheet question number 5. I want to look at these two things and, and see how they relate to this prayer in Numbers chapter 11. So 1 Peter chapter 5. Turn over in your Bibles to that scripture. Let's see what that says. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. That's 
one thing that we learn from this prayer example is that it is okay to bring those things that are our cares, our worries, our anxieties, the things that are troubling us, to bring those to God and to turn them over to him. Cast those things upon him because he cares about you. That's one thing that we learn. And then Proverbs and this is a scripture that we are all very familiar with. It's a favorite scripture of many people. Proverbs chapter 5. You might be able to, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 3. 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. How does that relate to this prayer? Moses had to trust in God to help him, to give him what he needed to be able to effectively lead those people. The problem with Moses' prayer that I want to point out that, that I think we have to be cautious of is Moses came to God and he did cast his, his anxieties, cast his troubles onto God. And, and he probably did trust that God might be able to help him from what he'd seen in the past, how God had answered his prayers. He came to him asking for help. One of the things that I think that we have to, to notice, though, is that Moses in this prayer kind of questions God in a way that is um, almost pushing it a little bit, kind of um, pushing the line a little bit. He does question God, and he questions him with a little bit of, um, I think disrespect, it's kind of on that um, line of, are you saying something here that is, that is accusing God of doing something? You know, he asks some questions at the beginning of the prayer that really sounds like you did this, you did this. And, and I think that's where Moses went wrong in this prayer. Um, where he should have used better judgment. Um, now, that's my opinion here. It doesn't say really how God felt about his prayer and the immediate response. But we do know that it was Moses' pride that kept him out of the promised land. It was this fact that Moses was starting to kind of elevate himself a bit, that he was forgetting that God was sovereign and was um, uh, lifting himself up a little bit too much onto the level uh, where God was. And so I think here he's getting dangerously close to, to being um, irreverent in his prayer. And so we need to remember that when we go to God in prayer, that we can talk to him about what is causing us to feel anger, what is causing us to be um, frustrated or displeased. But be careful how you speak to God. Don't ever forget who God is and who you are in his presence. Don't, don't forget who you're talking to when you're going to God in prayer. Keep that in mind. I love the example of Job. You know, Job was um, given many, many things to be angry about. And in Job chapter 1, verse 22, after everything was taken from him, after all these things, one thing after another, was taken from Job. In verse 22, it says, in all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrongdoing. I think that is such a good, just such a good example of, of somebody who, um, had lots of things happen to them, but did not blame God, did not charge God with that wrong. That's very important. Um, how do we apply this to our own lives? What do we learn from this prayer? Well, number one, I think we learn that we can go to God with the things that are causing us frustration. We can go to God 
with the things that are making us angry. I think that I think that he wants us to do that. I think God wants to be part of that um, communication. But that we remember that we don't displace our anger. We don't put our anger on God. I think that is dangerous and we should not do that. God does not tempt us. Remember from James chapter 1, I'm just going to flip over there really, really quickly. It says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Remember that God is good. God is loving. God is the giver of good things. God wants for you to, um, to have the things that you need and to be provided for. And, and he wants for you to, to be with him one day at home in heaven. He wants that for you. He does not want for you to, to, to suffer and to, to um, be hurt. He doesn't enjoy that. He doesn't want that. Now, God will always, always be there for us to help us through those things. He will always be there strengthening us. He will always be there aware of what's going on with us and remembering the promise in Romans 8, 28. All things are going to work together for good. And we have to remember that. So tell God how you feel. Don't place the blame on him, though. Remember who he is and remember who you are. Remember to um, ask him to help you with whatever it is that you're feeling. Ask him to help you with the anger that you're feeling or whatever it is that's causing you distress. Pray for peace in that situation. Pray for his strength to get through that situation. Trust him. Remember Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust him that he is going to um, direct your paths. Don't lean on your own understanding. And praise him. Praise him. I love that throughout the Psalms, we see David numerous times go to God with questions about why things were happening. But I love that in many of the Psalms, we see David follow up questions with praise. He follows up a questioning with praise. And I think that would be a good thing for us to practice. And then remember that as you are working through anger or working through frustration, remember that if you place that blame on God, that that's going to create a wedge in your relationship with him. Don't do that. Don't do that. You, you need God. You need him to help you through times that are hard and that are frustrating. Take time in, in situations that you are angered about to find ways to focus on other people, maybe. Focus on, on what you can do in this situation to, to help somebody else. Take the maybe the emphasis off yourself and what's making you so mad and you so angry and think about maybe what you could do in this situation or what you could take from the situation to help somebody else. It sometimes helps to take the, the um, focus off of ourselves a little bit. Um, that might not always apply, but it's something to think about if you are experiencing anger about something. My prayer prompt up here, I had you looking at Psalm um, chapter 118, and I just thought that this was a good scripture to think about, to remind ourselves of when we have things that are causing us to be um, angry. Psalm 118, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. That's verse 6 of Psalm 118. And as I read through the rest of that psalm, I got to the end and I thought that the last verse was, was so lovely. 
Um, so verse 29, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Remember when you're angry or frustrated and you want to talk to God about that. Remember that he is on your side. God is on your side. Remember that. And then also remember that he is good. God is good. Remember that. That he is not um, putting things in your life to cause you misery and to make you suffer. And because he has evil intent toward you. That is not the God we serve. So pray for him to help you work through whatever it is that's causing you anger and frustration. Ask for his help. Ask for his strength. Ask for his guidance and then trust him to get you through it. All right. Well, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Oh, I didn't really give you a prayer prompt for your prayer prompt today. If you have something that is on your heart, that is causing you anger, something that you're working through right now that is just really frustrating, um, I encourage you to talk to God about it. Talk to him about it. You can ask him questions, but don't accuse him through your questions. Ask him to help you through it, whatever it is that you're going through. Ask him to guide you. Ask him to help you have peace. Ask him to give you strength. Ask him to um, give you guidance, to guide your steps. If you're not going through anything right now in particular that is causing you anger or frustration, just talk about some things that maybe are causing you anxiety. There's a lot going on in our world right now that is something to be anxious about or worry about. Today in your prayer time, cast those things, cast those anxieties, cast those worries upon God. Give them to him. Give them to him today in prayer and, and ask him to give you peace over those things. All right. Now I hope you have a great day and I wish you peace and love and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye.